Hello, fuck. <laughs> What's in Tello? Thanks, Plus? 475. <laughs> Casey Gray here from The Conscious Builder, and this is episode eight of the Three Day Cottage. In the last episode, we got into insulation and those details. On this episode, we're getting into weather barrier, vapor barrier, and air barrier. And this is where we differ from a lot of other contractors out there. A lot of other contractors put their emphasis on what you can see, all of the pretty things that are nice for pictures, let's say. Whereas we put a lot of emphasis, a lot of focus on what you can't see as well as what you can see. But the stuff you can't see is what you can really feel when you live in the home. And that's stuff that we can't explain very well in a picture, but we can explain very well right here on episode eight. This episode is sponsored by 475 High Performance Building Supply. Before we get into the details of what we're about to share here, I wanna explain that there's three different barriers within a building assembly. And a lot of people, even people in the trades, don't understand this and get some of these mixed up. Typically they don't get the weather barrier mixed up, but they don't understand the difference between a vapor barrier and an air barrier. The weather barrier is self-explanatory, right? It's going to protect the home, the envelope, the assembly from the elements. So it goes on the outside of the building where any water, snow, whatever it may be, any sort of element can get to that assembly and protects it from being damaged. The vapor barrier prevents moisture in vapor, in the form of vapor, from getting into the wall assembly. And this is installed on the warm side. Now where we live, there's the warm side in the winter and the warm side in the summer, which is different. So in that case, we put the vapor barrier on the inside of the building. Whereas if you were living somewhere where it was always warm and you're always running air conditioning, then you would wanna put that on the exterior of the building. Now keep in mind, a vapor barrier does not need to be continuous as opposed to an air barrier, which does. Now the air barrier needs to be continuous because this is what eliminates the drafts that you feel within your house. It also reduces the potential issues of moisture that's traveling in that air and getting into your wall assembly and causing all sorts of problems. And it prevents the heat loss from traveling out of your home or the heat from coming into your home in the summer. Now the air barrier, different than the vapor barrier, can actually be installed anywhere in the wall assembly and it can actually be combined with either the weather barrier or the vapor barrier on the inside in this case. The weather barrier we decided to use for this project was a Pro Klima Mento 1000. You can get these in 1.5 or 3 meter widths, but we also cut strips of this to go under the sill plates in order to transition and protect them from moisture. It's a three layer airtight vapor open house wrap that is extremely strong and weather resistive. We decided to combine the vapor barrier and air barrier in one for this project, and we decided on Proclima's Intello Plus. It is an air barrier, smart vapor control layer, and dense pack reinforcement all in one. What makes it superior to the typical six mil poly you see builders using is that its perm rating will change based on the relative humidity, which allows moisture to travel through it in both directions. Now this is critical when you get into high performance homes like this, or when you get into wall assemblies that have a lot more insulation than your typical home, because we just have to assume that moisture is going to get in at some point, somehow. We don't know how, but let's just assume. So we wanna put this in as an insurance policy to make sure that the wall assembly can dry towards the outside or towards the inside. I really love this product because it's actually really easy to work with. Not only because it's tear resistant, so you're not stretching it like you might with the six mil poly, but it also has markings on it so you can line things up properly and cut in a nice straight line. 
Something to keep in mind when you're building a high performance home like this is where all of the penetrations to the air barrier are going to be. And this is especially important to think about when you're framing. So you can't just have a framer go in and slap it up really quick. You need to make sure that the framer is also thinking about what's potentially gonna happen with the insulator. So that's why it's a little bit trickier when you don't have trades that understand what's coming after them or maybe don't understand the building signs. So in this case, we knew that we were gonna have beams and color ties going through the air barrier. And we also knew that we had to put a ledger on the wall where the loft was going to be. So because of this, we had to install the air barrier and vapor barrier in this case before we put the ledger boards on the wall or else we would have had a break in our air barrier. And we want to make sure this is continuous everywhere. Once we had the framing of the exterior walls up and the roof on, we started installing the Mento 1000. For the joints, we used the Tescon Vanna tape. The adhesive is not water soluble, bonds at all connections, is waterproof after pressurization with the press fix, and there is no VOC off gassing. For the window sills, we use the Exto Seal Encore Sill Tape. This tape also works well in cold weather, but we were working in really cold weather, so it didn't bond as well as we would have liked it to bond, but with a little bit of help with a heat gun, we got it to stick as we needed to. Although this house is not going to be a certified passive house, all of these products that we're using are actually PHI certified. To seal around the windows or anywhere that we had an inside corner, we used the Tescon Profil. You can see this around the beams and the collar ties where we had to penetrate the air barrier as well as around the windows. The main difference between this and the Tescon Vanna is that this tape, the Profil, has a three split release on the back, which makes it easier to apply when it needs to be folded. For sealing up the 10 mil poly underneath the concrete slab, we use the Proclima Compego tape, which is ideal for sealing sub slab polyethylene, just like this. It's also good for air sealing, membranes, OSB, plywood, or metal components. So we also use this to connect this 10 mil poly to the Intello Plus on the walls. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this episode of The Three Day Cottage. Make sure you subscribe so you get net notifications for our next episode. We'll be working with Homesol to find out how the cottage performs with the blower door testing. If you want to see some more projects where we've used this product, including a 161-year-old stone home, you can check out the video here. She's staying till uh, Thursday then. No, she's listening out tonight. Oh, she's... <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't supposed to say that, was I? I used to don't, don't say right. I did You just I changed one out. letter. I know, Take well... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going go to a normal bed. She snores too loud, sorry. Oh, rude. <laughs> you throw me under the bus. <laughs> Come with me.